independent in thought and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Today I'm announcing that New Zealand will ban all military-style semi-automatic weapons. We will also ban all assault rifles. There you go. New Zealand, less than a week after a horrific shooting at a, two mosques that killed 50 people, wounded dozens more. They have decided that they've had enough and they're going to be getting rid of guns. Certain types of guns. Let's go over some of these things. Wonder to ourselves, will it ever happen here? No, it won't. So, semi-automatic firearms. MSSA weapons. All right? So this is Prime Minister Arden's office. Semi-automatic arms capable of being used with a detachable magazine which holds more than five cartridges and semi-automatic shotguns capable of being used with detachable magazines which holds more than five cartridges. So now you have to turn everything in for all intents and purposes. It's going to cost about $200 million. And the reason for that is they want to be nice. And they want to buy back your weapons. Details of the weapons handed back by owners that are covered by the ban will also be taken to ensure that fair and reasonable compensation is paid once the buyback is in place. Yeah, hey, hey, I've done nothing wrong. Take back something from me who is, well, I've just done nothing wrong. So just take it back. Here, buy it. Just give me whatever you think it's worth, right? And they're okay with that. Their constitution is not as old as ours. Right. They're not their constitution. And, and let me tell you some Australia, New Zealand. People always ask me if you were to live anywhere else in the world, you had to live somewhere forever. And I lived in Europe off and on for a decade. And I loved it there. I love being in England. I would choose Australia. You know, down under uh, is the closest that you find in a lot of ways to what we offer here and what I, I like. <sighs> Overreaction. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, I think it's an overreaction, but it's not my country. But it doesn't mean that the media here is not going to go, well, why can't we do these kind of things here? Why can't we do these kind of things here? Because we have a constitution that protects us. We're slow moving because we don't want reactionary situations. If we were in a situation where we reacted to every kind of thing that became hysteria in this country, my God, could you imagine that, what that would be like? Could you imagine what that would be like if every time something that was huge and massive happened and the reaction of the 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 public and politicians and then we went with that reaction, what would take place? It would be insane. It would be absolutely insane. We could not have that. But that's what they're going to do. They and it's their country. It's never going to happen here. It's not because we have the Constitution. That's why even when people talk about, you know, Trump declaring a state of emergency that, you know, well, what if the next person who becomes president is a Democrat and says that uh, guns are a state of emergency? We have a Constitution to protect ourselves from that. A Constitution and a Bill of Rights, by the way, which apparently very few Americans know. We'll go over that in a little bit. But that is the reality of what we have here. It was set up so we couldn't become reactionary. I made a joke earlier. Somebody tweeted at me. I said, well, this is what happens when we let a woman run a country. <laughs> like, oh, my God. You're such a jerk, Chad. Get over yourself. It's a joke. Can we not joke anymore? No, we cannot. Everything has to be serious all the time. Everything all the time has to be serious. There can never be anything that is not serious, and everything has to be hair on fire. It's their country. I applaud them. Don't know what will happen next. The next person gets in there and says, you know what, maybe we've gone too far. Because remember what happened after the shootings in Florida, right? What took place after that? What took place? The next week or two, in the front, there it is. Parkland, the whole nine yards, people talking about it. The front pages, the debate, the rage, the whole nine yards, the NRA. is The NRA was in everybody else's crosshairs. All these things are happening. And what ended up happening Immediately afterwards is the reaction of something that had had popped our safety bubble. In the world that we lived in, we are safer, happier, healthier, living longer 
And it's not just us globally. And when that bubble gets popped, people think, oh, it's like when somebody gets kidnapped, we all we hold our kids a little tighter because we think it happens every 30 seconds. And it doesn't. It doesn't. But if it gets into that safety bubble you live in, people react. Top of mind. Oh, we got to take away guns. We got to do this. Assault rifles needs to go. Anything, all these stuff. All you should be allowed to have is a musket. And then what ends up happening? A year later, this past February, where we were the day before Parkland when it comes to gun control is right back where we were. Because cooler, calmer heads prevail. We take a deep breath. We don't panic. We don't do anything stupid. We step back and we say, all right, let's, let's, let's see here. They reacted in less than a week. Would you like that for your country? Would you like that for your country that the reaction comes, boom, immediately? I I wouldn't. You want to talk about things, right? Debate them. Look and see what our liberties and freedoms are. What does our Constitution say? I don't know about you, but... No, I don't want that kind of reactionary. I don't. We have our rights. What are those rights, by the way? What is it? One in five can't even name any of the Bill of Rights. Here is a brief Bill of Rights version for those of you who struggle with the Bill of Rights. Freedom of religion, speech, press, assembly, right? Right to keep and bear arms. No quartering of soldiers. I will never do that again. Freedom for unreasonable searches and seizures for right to due process of law, freedom of self-incrimination. So, you know, you don't have to, you know, that's when people say I plead the fifth. That's what that one is. Right of an accused person, e.g. right to a speedy and public trial, right of a trial by jury in civil cases, freedom from excessive bail, cruel and unusual punishment, other rights of people, number nine and number 10, powers reserved to the state. Just to give you, because one in five can't even name any of them. But that number two right there, right to bear arms, that wasn't a right to bear arms in a way, well, we need to protect ourselves from foreign, no, no, that was a right to bear arms. We need to protect the powers that be that maybe one day we'll want to take away some of these freedoms that we're guaranteeing. New Zealand went that way. It's not going to happen here. New Zealand decided to do that. It's not going to happen here. It isn't. Although many people would try, the reality is it's not going to happen here. Could you imagine if they said, well, we're just going to come and you're, you're, we're going to take your guns and you can either sell them back to us or you're going to have to forfeit them to us and we're going to come door to door. Never going to happen. Could you imagine that? Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Not. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from every one of you tweets are coming in you're such a jerk you made me laugh i was a joke why can't we we can't we joke anymore god i'm so goodness me goodness goodness me i just I, i'm amazed that we can't joke anymore i shouldn't be amazed though when you look around and you see all the things that are going on in the world of perfect political correctness you, you can't joke anymore for the fear of getting hammered like you almost have to say I, you have to preface everything. Was, I'm going to tell you a joke. And then you tell the joke. And then you're like, that is the end of the joke. So that way people will know, oh, that person was joking. So stupid. Speaking of stupid, it continues to be so. These are the things right here that drive me crazy about Trump. But there's a lot that drives me crazy. I get it all the time. Well, you know, you're a horrible person uh, for supporting Trump. And then if I say anything about, you know, Trump, uh, yeah, I get the other side saying you're a horrible person for even talking any ill will against our presidents. But this is the stuff that you just let it go. Let it go. A man named John McCain. So I have to be honest, I've never liked him much. Hasn't been for me. Probably never will. But there are certain reasons for it, and I'll tell you. John McCain received a a fake and phony dossier paid for by crooked Hillary Clinton. And John McCain got it. He got it. And what did he do? Didn't call me. He turned it over to the FBI, hoping to put me in jeopardy. And uh, that's not the nicest thing to do. 
They didn't like each other for a long time. But and somebody asked him the question the other day. Somebody asked him a question out of nowhere, right, about John McCain. And the dossier stuff came up, and people who understand it, with it which what ended up happening with how he got the dossier, and he turned it over to some people that got to the media and the whole nine yards rather than come to him. I, I understand why Trump would be pissed. I understand completely. And here's the other thing. Just because you served in the military and you went through the things that you went through, which were above and beyond even people who served in the military, doesn't mean that you are above reproach and somebody can't criticize you and somebody can't say, I don't like the way you've acted, right? doesn't make you a, a flawless person. I think even if he was here, he would say, no, absolutely, you're absolutely right. They don't like each other. They don't. But stop bringing it up. Let it go. The man has passed. The man served our country. He served us in several different ways. You don't have to like anything about him whatsoever. Let it go. But you wade into it, and you continue to do stuff like this. And, you know, I, I – and, and here's the other thing. The one thing you, you say about Trump is you ask him a question, you're going to get an answer, right? And you're not going to get the answer that you would get from every politician out there. I talk to senators, and I talk to congresspeople more than a few times a week. John wasn't always loved. John wasn't always liked, and he could be ruthless and tough, just like some of them can be. But the answer they'd give you is, he was a great man, he served our country well, and and what he did was was awesome, and we can never thank him for the debt that he's... But that's not what you get from Trump. You get from Trump the same thing that you get from a lot of people who are comics, a lot of people who are like the Howard Stearns of the world and stuff, is they say the things that sometimes some people think but nobody's willing to say. And in politics, we just don't get that. We just don't get that. Uh, I think the president's uh, comments about Senator McCain hurt him more than they hurt the legacy of Senator McCain. I'm going to try to continue to help the president. Yeah. And I don't think it, it doesn't help you at all. And yes, the media brings it up. But every once in a while, you got to learn not to take a punch. Right. Every once in a while, your defense has to be bob and weave, not just I'll take it on the chin and fire back. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Oh, the college basketball match madness. I'm so excited. I tried in every way, shape, or form not to pick Duke. Not to pick I'm saying, okay, what is what are the ways that I don't pick Duke to win? the national championship. There are like three things that have to happen. One, Zion Williamson gets hurt. Two, Zion Williamson decides he doesn't want to risk hurting himself before he goes to the NBA to become the number one pick, so he decides not to play himself. And three, he's abducted by aliens. Like, those are the only three ways I don't think they win. And I tried. I tried. Just no. No, it's, it's going to happen. That's my that's my that is my one give to you guys is I think it's going to happen. But I'm excited. It's I was telling producer Phil it's the one day of the it's the one weekend of the year where people who have nothing invested in like Belmont College taking on LSU on a Thursday or whatever it is where people will gather around the television and watch the games. It's crazy. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Oh! When you want to spot a burglar, when they're outdoors, when you want to spot somebody who is casing your house, maybe even looking to see if you've got packages delivered, when they're outside, you want to catch them. You want to keep them away. That's where Blink Home Security comes in. Let me tell you something. They are amazing. They've got these indoor-outdoor cameras that are wire-free, motion-activated, absolutely incredible, easy to set up to. So I do it. You can do it. Incredible. Plus, they've got a live feed option, which allows you to monitor your home and check in on it from anywhere using the Blink smartphone app. Right now. It is so inexpensive. You guys have no idea how cheap this is. There's no contracts, no subscription, totally affordable. They start at just $79.99. That's $79.99. It's never been easier. It's never been cheaper. It is incredible. Visit BlinkProtect.com slash sale. BlinkProtect.com slash sale. BlinkProtect.com slash sale. It's the Chad Benson Show. Experiencing 
separation anxiety? <laughs> That's dumb. Check out Chad 24-7 at his website, chadbensonshow.com, and on iTunes, free. The Chad Benson Show. 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 Never feel lonely again. It's been one of those days. I'm not going to lie to you. I've got basketball game on, basketball game on. I'm watching it. Don't have anything invested in any of these, but it is that thing. And, and I was telling producer Phil, the status thing and the most ex- about all of this is after literally five hours, six hours, eight hours of basketball, when all is said and done in the first weekend, in the first day, it never fails for me to go, my bracket looks and sounds like... Oh, God. Marquette, please. <laughs> You're like pulling for Marquette. I don't even know where Marquette is. I think it's in Chicago. It's just awful. What the hell's wrong with us? We just love this, though, don't we? Man, I tweeted out earlier or something, and I've got people tweeting me about, did you see the Auburn versus New Mexico game? Oh, my God. And it's like, did you go to Auburn, New Mexico? Nope. It was just great to watch. Took the day off. I'm like, there you go. Sums up how we're doing it. So it's funny. I go to this little cafe next door to get like iced tea and stuff. And I go in there to th- this afternoon and there are the little ladies around the TV who work inside the place watching college basketball because they've got like a pool going on because it's about participation, kids, about participation. Three, two, three, five, three, eight, twenty four, twenty three at Chad Benson show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Many of you tweeting in about the whole McCain and, and Trump thing and. Look, I, I, you know, we're going we're gonna to get deeper into it. Tomorrow he's going to be on with Maria Barcelona, but some of that interview is, is already out there. We'll talk about it. And I don't like what he does. Uh, I don't. And it is ridiculous. It's, I, I understand that. Can I understand why he could be angry? Absolutely. Let it go, though. I understand why he'd be angry, but let it go. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Trump! Signing something today that, ah, man, I understand why he's doing this. I do. I absolutely, I don't know what good it's going to do, but I understand. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. The company confirmed Thursday that for years it stored millions of user passwords in plain text. Facebook says there's no evidence that employees had abused access to the data, no and it says the passwords were stored on internal company servers and no outsiders could access them. The security blog Krebs on Security says some 600 million users may have had their passwords stored in plain text. Facebook says it's fixed the problem and will be notifying those whose passwords were stored that way. Hey, we fixed the problem. I know, I know, I know. We say we do stuff and then we don't do it and then people call us on the floor for it, but we're never under oath. But we fixed the problem and it was only a couple years and we've known about it for a while, but we didn't tell anybody because we don't care. Because you have no options. So your option is stay with us, stay with us, stay with us, or don't have anything at all. Those tend to be your options. Now, if you're younger, you go to Instagram, right? Maybe you can go to WhatsApp. But just, no, nobody's going to do that, right? Instagram is, is, you don't got the old folk there yet. By old folk, I mean anybody over 35. So they don't care. Every day, Google, Facebook, somebody, Twitter, happy birthday, Twitter. Was Twitter 10 today? 9, 10? It's insane. I'm always amazed. Like, you ever see how many times? Like, I think, uh, you know, let's let's take a look at the, how many times I've tweeted. I can't even remember when I even joined Twitter. Uh, let's see. I've tweeted 6,400 times. 6,400 times I've tweeted, and I've been a member since 2010. So I got on early, I guess, by the sounds of it. Right? I got on, but I. That's not a lot, though. I mean, it's not a lot of tweets when you think about it. Because you go on. I'm always amazed when I go on. I mean, who has the time, Trump? Uh, you know, you go on and you look at how many times people have tweeted. 
And I'm, I don't, I, I, I'm amazed. It's like, who, like 4,800 times, 27,000 times, like, who does that? What are you doing all day? Well, it's the way I talk to my audience. I get it. I get it. And I try. I try to be more engaged. And I here's the thing. While I've tweeted 6,400 times, I don't know if that is actual a tweet where it goes out to everybody or if I answer back to people because I do that a lot. So I, I, a lot of, I got a lot more text messages than tweets because it's just easier. But I just – because who – do you really care what somebody's eating? Or something like, like, here we are. I'm out. It's Thursday. Here's a donut. Here's I'm having a piece of pizza. That's kind of what I think of now. That's what Instagram is. Uh, I don't know. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. All right, kids. So Trump did something today. I don't know how. It, it, again, like a lot of these things, it's short on details. Like that. Do we even care about details anymore? I think the action is all we really care about. Well, you tried. And it was an executive order. In a few moments, I will be signing an executive order to protect free speech on college campuses. Just the thought of it sounds good. It does. Look, it does. The thought of free speech on college campuses. Do I agree with the executive order? No. But for those of you out there who can't stand Trump and think it's all a bunch of whininess, let's be 100% honest. If you think college campuses in any way, shape, or form, give you even a third of the story from the right side or even the middle of the aisle, you are full of it. You are absolutely full of it. They, they just don't. I tweeted this out earlier, and somebody said, uh, I just don't think it's right. He goes, the most important thing is the safety of the kids, and there's too much potential for violence. Uh, and I'm like, do you really believe that? Yeah. I said, so if somebody on the right says, if so-and-so is going to come here and give a speech, we're going to burn this place down. Is that the only thing that would, this is it now we're going to show up. We're just, if we don't like the other side, we'll just show up and fight and break a bunch of things. And, and eventually that'll quiet everybody down. The free speech will eventually disappear because you're going to be like uh, the potential of something happening. Jordan Peterson was supposed to speak at what, Cambridge? I've been to one of those. I went and saw Diego Maradona speak at Cambridge. It was awesome. It was awesome. Diego Maradona, for those of you who don't know, one of the greatest, if not the greatest soccer player to ever play the game uh, in the last 40 or 50 years. Uh, and, yes, I'll say even better than Pele. Uh, he he gave a speech, and it was, it was great. It's like going to, to Oxford and to Cambridge to give these things are really amazing. And... Uh, he was, uh, they told him, nah, no, sorry, no, you, you, you're not going to be here. In fact, here's something else. New Zealand, get ready for this. I don't know if you saw this today, Producer Phil, but New Zealand, of course, who's getting rid of guns, I think a knee-jerk reaction, but I don't live there. That's their country. It is what it is. Knee-jerk reaction. They're getting rid of stuff uh, guns-wise. They're taking Jordan Peterson's books out of the bookstores because potential trigger for people and it's full of hate if you've ever read any of jordan peterson's stuff if you've ever seen any of his any of his speeches or any of his lecturing if you've ever seen any of those things this is what's funny jordan peterson is a professor and they won't let him come to college campuses to speech because what you're afraid that he's gonna answer a question with data and facts that you don't like and find offensive yeah, I, I, I think there's an opportunity here to have a real discussion of what's going on in college campuses. And if you're a conservative, do you feel safe? For all the trigger warnings and the fear, as somebody who's a little, as somebody who's even a libertarian, do you feel safe on campus talking about your views? I bet you get a no. With me on stage, incredible young people. These courageous Americans have stood up for the forces of political indoctrinations, and they really stood up to it, too, like very few people have been able to. Censorship and coercion. You refuse to be silenced by powerful institutions and close-minded critics, of which there are many. Yeah. I've just never understood the fear 
of, okay, here comes Ben Shapiro. Terrifying Ben Shapiro. Like, so terrifying. Like, oh, my God, it's Ben Shapiro. He's going to come on stage, and he's going to give a lecture, and he's going to say a few things. And because of that, these people need therapy. They need this. Or here comes Milo. Watch out for Milo. By the way. When I hung out with Milo, when we were in, in Philadelphia, not Philadelphia, but uh, Cleveland, and and uh, I got it. The first thing I thought is, man, that guy, he's a, God, he's a badass. Like, that, like fear. Like, he walked up, and the thing came to my mind. It's like, whoa, it's Horace Gracie. <laughs> no, no, it's not. But, Chad, they're, they're, they're what? This, when I was a kid... College used to be this thing where you go and you're 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 trying to you're working out your beliefs and you you're probably a little bit more liberal, which is fine. You're supposed to be that way when you're younger and you and and you get on the campus and you hear different views espoused and people talk about stuff and you got a professor that's over on the left and he or she's going to stretch you in some of your thoughts and maybe show you stuff, but then you got a guy over here on the right and he or she is going to stretch you a little bit and you're going to listen to all of these things and you're going to debate with your friends and your and people and your peers in the classroom and and maybe you're going to see some people on campus and they're going to be talking about things and you go to a lecture here or there and it's going to be wow and instead it's this is what it is it's this 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 period this is it it's the left side of the aisle it's indoctrination it's in, in intersectionality of victim groups and all kinds of ridiculousness and guess what it's a bunch of crap it is I would protect anybody on the left, the far left, and their speech if they wanted to give a speech somewhere. You got no problem with that. You should. It's about protecting the speech that you don't like. But in college, it should be about challenging belief systems, challenging things that you think are right or wrong with the world and finding these things out through facts and data. And it's not. It's intersectionality of victimhood where people are together talking about who's more of a victim and how they can protect these groups and how these groups are all wrong. And this is the way it has to be. It is absolute BS. Courage. Today we're delivering a clear message to the professors and power structures trying to suppress dissent and keep young Americans and all Americans, not just young Americans, like Ellen and Caitlin and Polly from challenging rigid far-left ideology. People who are confident in their beliefs do not censor others. We don't want to censor others. They welcome free, fair, and open debate, and that's what we're demanding. Yeah, that's it. That's it. If it gets violent, no. And I understand if you're in a situation where you are the dean of a school your first thought is I have to protect these kids. And you allow outside influences to come onto campus and to disrupt stuff. That's not a good thing. Your first thought is in the end, I've got to protect these kids, but only to a certain point, right? As far as protect them from the violence and the harm. But if you're protecting them from their beliefs being challenged, to the point where they may have to go into therapy because somebody said something. That right there is ridiculous. And why it really matters is these kids will one day be your peers, your coworkers. Imagine what that's going to be like in a world where if you say something jokingly to your friend who you've been friends with and worked with for 15 or 20 years, somebody hears it across the room who's worked there for six months And all of a sudden you're in a lot of trouble because you've challenged their belief system and or said something that they deem to be triggering and you're dragged your ass into HR. Yeah, there's a lot of things here that should be challenged. How, and again, short on details, don't know what's going to happen, don't know how they implement it. They've talked about, I think, the 12 grant agencies that work with public and private college. So you take any public money, whether you're a private college or a public college, and you take public money, if you don't supposedly comply with this, they're able to take grant money away from you. I don't know how that works. I don't know if it's going to happen the way they say it will, short on details. But as much as I I, I don't want a government where 
he goes, hey, I'm signing this piece of paper to do something. That's He's not an emperor. The last guy did it as well. Not an emperor. And we got pissed off about that. Everybody should also be up in arms of the way that conservatives and people with any kind of alternative belief system to the liberal norms and BS at college campuses are treated. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet us. We'll touch on this a little bit later. We got a lot of stuff to get to today. Uh, we should be over the weekend. It's, look, there's a possibility that we could take a long vacation next weekend if the numbers add up. Wednesday's Powerball jackpot drawing was worth an estimated $560 million. The winning numbers, 10, 53, 50, 63, 14, and the Powerball number, 21. Because there was no winner, the jackpot for Saturday's drawing jumps to $625 million. That's the fourth highest Powerball jackpot of all time, seventh largest jackpot ever in the United States. The cash option estimated at $380 million. Yeah, three hundred eighty million dollars, hundred and one in two hundred ninety one million is your chance to win this. And I hope I get this right, producer Phil. I may not get this right, but to get the perfect bracket, which I will not be getting already after a few games in the March Madness tournament, it is one in Nine how many quintillion? quintillion. Quintil- uh, quint- I, you made up a word. I just feel like you made up a word. Quintillion. That's 17 zeros, right? That's a lot of zeros. That is Just a, a big word. Zeros. It's a big word. It's a made-up word right there. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Oh, AMAC. Speaking of conservatives, they're the alternative to the left-leaning Goliath that is ARP. Founded a decade ago. Their membership costs less than 20 bucks a year. Their benefits, you get yearly 10, 20, 30, 30 times as big. And incredible. Here's something you're going to get with AMAC. How about a free one-year membership on me? Yeah, free one-year membership. They're a political advocacy organization and a membership organization. Their organization does all kinds of stuff. That's not just what they do. Just, oh, hey, we go out there and help fight for common sense immigration reform and health care like repeal and replace of Obamacare. Oh, yeah, they do that. But they also have the incredible benefits discounts to things like travel competitively priced insurance roadside assistance retail restaurant hotel discounts you name it they've got it and right now i'm offering my listeners at you guys a free one-year membership go to amac.us forward slash chad you're going to receive a free one-year membership they didn't want your credit card just sign up that's it benefits with free membership are worth the while it takes to sign up for this go to amac.us forward slash chad or call 888 888- 355-1668. Again, that's 888-355-1668. Or go to amac.us forward slash Chad. One-year membership absolutely free from AMAC. A-M-A-C dot U-S forward slash Chad. Chad Benson Show. Set Chad straight. Text the show, 323-538-2423. That's 323-538-CHAD. Someone has to do it. Might as well be you. The Chad Benson Show. We love our labs. We have for more than a quarter of a century. The American Kennel Club says the Labrador Retriever is top dog among canines here in the U.S. for the 28th year in a row. The AKC says whether they're yellow, black, or chocolate, labs get high marks for being smart, loyal, and great with kids. Number two, German Shepherd Dogs. Third, Golden Retrievers. Two Bulldogs round out the top five, the French and the English. Do you have to say German Shepherd Dogs? Don't you kind of know what that is? Like, that just felt weird. Like, German Shepherd Dogs. I know what a German Shepherd is. Like, if you said German Shepherd, like, you'd think there's going to be a guy out there with, this, like, with a bunch of sheep. What are you doing? Shepherding? I'm shepherding the sheep from point A to point B as per usual at this time. I, when I was a kid, I had a golden retriever. I had a Labrador. I, I had, you know, as a kid growing up, you, had, you, you go through dogs. Ah, uh, labs are awesome. No, they, they're just are. They're just like you are. They're just awesome. I have a doodle now, and it is useless. It is just. It is. Uh, we we rescued him. Got him from uh, like PetSmart or something. Like one of those like adoption weekends. And uh, yeah, he was totally like they're like we think he's three. I'm like mm. the clouds in his eyes say he's a little bit older. So yeah, but he's just a. He's just useless, but you just love dogs. Dogs are great. 
Not my lizards. I mean, my lizards are way better, but I do like uh, I do like my little dog. He's great. But I do. Everybody's got that favorite dog, and I, I gotta say, Labrador's pretty awesome. They are. They are pretty awesome. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Oh, so I was telling producer Phil, I'm doing okay. My bracket first day here. All right, so it's first day. Doing okay in the, the 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 groups. I got 95% of my picks right or whatever. Currently, I'm sitting 2.1 million. That is my rank. Right? That's my rank. Oh, I've moved up, Phil. I'm all, I'm ranked 857,000. Long way you. to go, kids. But I'm going to get there. Phil, for those of you not keeping score, and his bracket sounds a lot like this. Yeah, because his break, his bracket already sucks. But uh, we're, I'm telling you, you just my whole thing is just I want to make sure that when I get to the final four, yeah, you want to have all four teams. But God, it's when your team that you pick loses in the first weekend, and you're like, God, this sucks. I'm not watching this anymore. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. If you realize uh, about uh, three days ago, it came out that his main person gave to the FBI the fake news dossier. It was a fake. It was a fraud. It was paid for by Hillary Clinton and the Democrats. They gave it to John McCain, who gave it to the FBI uh, for very evil purposes. Uh, That's That's not good. And the other thing he voted against repeal and replace now he's been campaigning for years for repeal and replace uh i'm not a fan <sighs> this weekend i was at sea world love sea world but chad it's awful these animals just love it you know what's weird okay get ready for this you'll you'll find this a little off topic here Ooh, piece of candy shiny thing moving over here we're standing there looking at all the killer whales you know and they're getting fed and, and they're and they're they were brushing one of their teeth. They use like a one of those water picks to clean out the teeth of the killer whales. I thought, oh, and you know what I did the next day? I bought a water pick. <laughs> oh, I am a mess. So, but I, we're out there, right? So we're enjoying ourselves at SeaWorld. And I, I talked a bit about it this on Monday. It was a beautiful day. It was a sunny day. And there was a girl who was wearing an outfit she shouldn't have been wearing. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Just because you can say something, wear something, whatever it is, doesn't mean you should. I get you're pissed. I get you're angry. I get all of those things. And if this is all to be, look, the repeal and replace, he's 100% right about that. There was a lot of Republicans out there and a lot of people on the right side of the aisle who were pissed that John McCain decided to go in a different direction because for years and years, and I blame this on all the Republicans, not just John McCain, they talked the biggest game. It was just a bunch of crap because when push came to shove, they failed. And yeah, he was that vote. The dossier thing, I'd be absolutely pissed about that, too. But just because you can doesn't mean you should. That's it. It's that simple. I get people are asking you the question. And you know why? Because you'll answer the question. You're the Ron Burgundy of stuff. People will, right there, you're going to give them an answer. Whatever's in your brain, whatever you see in your brain, and it's going to come straight out of your mouth, where other politicians would skirt the issue or say, I'm not going to talk about that right now. 
repeal and replace, we would have had great health care. But, Mr. President, Millions, he's dead. He can't punch back. I know uh, you punch back, no, but he's dead. I don't talk about it. People ask me the question. I didn't bring this up. You just brought it up. You asked the question. Well, you talked about it this week. When they asked me the question, I answered the question. But you people bring it up. I don't bring it up. I'm not a fan. He was horrible what he did with repeal and replace. It was what he did to the Republican Party and to the nation and to sick people that could have had great health care was not good. So I'm not a fan of John McCain, and that's fine. And people are asking the question. Maria Bartoloma there asked the question. The other day, somebody asked him the question, and he answered it. Do, do I wish that he would just say, John's gone, we thank him for his service, we didn't get along, next question. If you're going to have to say something, that's it. Trump's base loves this. They can't stand him. They can't stand John McCain. There's a lot of Republicans out there who, who who can't stand the fact that John McCain was part of that breaking up of the opportunity to repeal and replace Obamacare. I get why you're mad. I understand. You guys didn't like each other. He couldn't stand you. And it, long before you became president, he didn't think much of you. But just because you can doesn't mean you should. Uh, I think the president's uh, comments about Senator McCain hurt him more than they hurt the legacy of Senator McCain. I'm going to try to continue to help the president. That's Lin- that's Lindsey Graham there. And he's got a soft spot for, for Trump. He has been a huge supporter of Trump in the last several months. And you can hear in his voice, he was disappointed about that. It is amazing how much of the president's face views John McCain in a more negative tone than Hillary Clinton. There is a part of the Trump base that just wants to make liberals cry, I guess, or just wants to, what is it, own the libs, that that's all the Trump candidacy is for these folks. They love it. They don't lament it. They love it. What has happened? Chuck Todd right there. He's right. There is a certain group in there who they want Trump to be the voice against the elitism in D.C. and in New York and in L.A. They they want that. They want that. There that, there is there is a group out there, that, and, and a large base, by the way, that will do anything for Trump. They will do just about anything for Trump. They'll cut off their arms for Trump. I mean, like, <laughs> cut off your arms. I don't see that with any other politician. And I said yesterday, I don't like what he's done. I don't like the fact that you're going out there and picking a fight with somebody who's not here anymore. And the way that you're doing it, I'm not a fan of. I got just torched by people. What a liberal scumbag hack. I should go blankety, 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 blank, blank, blank. And I'm just, I'm laughing my ass off. You, you, you're not, you can't reason with anybody like that. For me, though, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And I just felt it misses the mark here. But I also feel that the media knows that they're going to get an answer from him. You ask him a question, he's not going to shirk away from it. And the one thing about that that's amazing is I love the fact that at least you know where you stand. Because too often than not, you see politicians will tell you one thing, do something completely different, and then not do anything to 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 talk about anything. They'll skirt all the issues. They won't tell you anything to do with the actual process in which it was done, and and they will they won't even touch on it. And that frustrates me too. I just wish he was a little more, more couth, just a smidge. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Love hearing from you. Yes, it's March Madness. We're enjoying ourselves. Producer Phil and I are throwing stuff at televisions and computer screens. Uh, I'm excited tonight. Zion Williams playing. That is the primetime game tonight. If you've not seen this guy play, he's generational. And, you know, you always like, like in every sport, like somebody retires that was great for all those years. And you think to yourself, is there ever going to be another one like him? Is this it? There's never going to be, you know, 
So and so retires. You know, Pele. Oh, is there ever going to be anybody as good? Oh my goodness. You know. Oh, wait a minute. Here's Maradona. Is there going to be as good? It's like Gretzky retires. Well, everybody in is good. You know, Jordan retires. Is there ever going to be anybody? And there's a few people. There, there's great players, but there's Kobe, and then all of a sudden there's LeBron, and they're generational. This is that guy. Like this is that guy. I'm excited. I'm gonna watch the hell out of that tonight. I'm gonna go work out. I'm gonna watch him dunk and he's playing North Dakota State. So if I just picture like five white guys that are all about six foot four and he's like holding the ball in the air and they're all jumping up trying to take it from him. <laughs> like, like you do with a kid. <laughs> and he puts his hand out on your forehead and you're tr- you're swinging at him and then he just turns and dunks it. That's kind of what I picture going on tonight. But it's going to be awesome. And if and if you've never seen him, even if you're not a big fan of like sports, it is just interesting to watch, and you're going to say the same thing. It's like, why is that? Who? What? That? It's a Predators playing basketball, just crushing people, and he's going to crush people. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Uh, New Zealand today decided, yeah, it's been six days, and I said we were going to do this, so let's do it. Today I'm announcing that New Zealand will ban all military-style semi-automatic weapons. We will also ban all assault rifles. And the weapons are this. If you have a gun that has a magazine that can hold more than five cartridges, it's illegal. You have to turn it in. That's it. So listen to this. This is the police chief. People who were, prior to 3 p.m., lawfully in possession of firearms such as semi-automatic assault rifles are no longer lawfully in possession of those firearms due to the categorization or the change in categorization. And the the left is excited, and I saw a bunch of people say, why can't we do that? Because we can't do that here. We're we're not a knee-jerk reaction. We, We do it with emotion, but luckily... Politics here is set up in a way that we can't react in such a way that is so ridiculous. What took place last week was awful. We all understand that. Parkland, awful. Right? The Pulse nightclub, awful. We can go through. All of them are awful. They puncture our safety bubble that we have, that we're living in. But the reaction of this is a bit of an overreaction. And you're starting to see people in New Zealand are very upset because they're law-abiding citizens and somebody broke the law. And because of that, they're getting punished for it. Won't happen here because we have a constitution that guarantees us, that has our, has our rights right there in black and white of this protection. People are like, we wish we could happen here. It's No. No. And I get that people don't like guns, and I get that a lot of people are afraid of guns. Right? But I look at this in the, in the knee-jerk reaction way that this is taking place, and you step back for your se- in a second, and you say to yourself, my God, it's... <sighs> Could you imagine if we went on emotions here in our politics? And our politics are already emotional way more than they should be. And we had a constitution that, a constitution that we could maneuver in and out and change whenever we want in a very simple way. Could you imagine how much stuff would be going on? Yeah, no. I'm glad that they're doing what they think is right. And I'm glad that we are who we are and the way that we're handling. And we've handled things like this. And I like the debate. And I like the openness. And I love the fact that states have the opportunity to go out and to govern themselves, you'll see states that will put more restrictions on certain things and other states that will allow their states to rule the way that they want to do. That's what makes us great. They've decided to do this and good for them. And we are who we are and good for us. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Oh, man, my pillow. So I've got uh, these Giza sheets, these new sheets from MyPillow, and uh, they are so cool. It says on here, most comfortable sheets you ever sleep on. I, I've, it was incredible. First of all, 
we had a big king bed and they fit, which is like always a good thing because I don't know if you guys get frustrated where nothing fits and then you wash it. What well, fits once and you wash it and never fits again and it's always popping off. Not going to happen with these. This cotton is grown in a small area in the Mediterranean Sea, right there, right there, right in the Mediterranean Sea. It is so nice, so breathable. You slide into them and you're like, this feels like a million bucks. It's durable, deep pockets, fit any mattress over any bed. Here is what they're doing for you guys right now. Buy them, super discount. Check them out for yourself. Giza cotton sheets today. Get them from my pillow. Call 800 983 4975 or go to mypillow.com. Use the promo code Benson. It's mypillow.com, mypillow.com. Promo code Benson or call 800 983 4975. Promo code Benson. It's the Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show, where we make no apologies, although we do say a few Hail Marys and our fathers now and then. Amen. Mm. Tell you what, Trump today signing an executive order when it comes to colleges, and, you know, I I tweeted out earlier, and uh, I hate what goes on in colleges with the fact that they're not going to allow certain speakers to come on campus, right? They're not going to allow certain speakers to come on campus. They've been invited on campus, sometimes not just by conservative groups, but by the college themselves. And they won't allow them to come on campus because of, oh, you know, if they come on campus, what could potentially happen is people were going to be hurt. And it's it's ridiculous. And Trump said today, no, it's not going to happen. I'm going to sign an executive order, short on details, but the potential of billions of dollars not making it to colleges if you don't allow people with a different viewpoint, in particular conservative viewpoint, to have a fair shake on campus. Under the policy I am announcing today, federal agencies will use their authority under various grant-making programs to ensure that public universities protect, cherish, protect the First Amendment and First Amendment rights of their students or risk losing Billions and billions of dollars of federal taxpayer dollars. Yeah, about thirty-five billion. So twelve agencies that give grants to colleges could potentially pull some of that money back or hold some money back. That includes a lot of stuff like the potential for some of these colleges that make a ton of uh, of of research, take some of this money for research grants and stuff like that. That they may they may lose out on. I. I don't like the fact that he, he, you know, he throws out executive orders. I didn't like the fact the last guy did. I am pretty fair along that way. Somebody just tweeted at me. It's funny how you Trumpers. First of all, I'm not a Trumper. I support my president. If it had been Hillary, I'd support her. I and if, and if she did something wrong, I'd disagree. And if she did something right, I would praise her. <gasps> what? Yeah. You hear what you want to hear. That's what that's what people out there do. You hear what you want to hear. I don't like the executive order, but you know what I never hear from you? It's the fact that so many of you say it's horrible what he's doing. Why would he do something like this when you don't defend the fact that there are kids out there who have a different point of view and these colleges are doctrinating these kids with ridiculous BS and scaring anybody who's got a different viewpoint away by saying you're going to trigger something. College campuses are a one-stop shop for all things left and progressive. And if you dare challenge any of these people in a different ideology, even if you have facts and data, you run the risk of getting hammered for it. So what do you do? You put your head down, you keep your mouth shut. And it's a joke. I mean, you've got, I mean, the professors say and do things that are so wacky and crazy. You got a professor at Davis, California, who has tweeted out and stood by his tweets, the killing of police officers. Nothing has happened to him. If you would have advocated the killing of lesbians, what do you think would have happened? Yeah. 
Ben Shapiro's coming to campus. Quick, everybody, go to your safe spaces. We know how dangerous he is. Somebody said he's an anti-Semite. I said, "Are you? Is it underneath? Is his? Is it underneath his yarmulke? Is that where is anti-Semitism sitting? What's wrong with people? I have no problem with it. I don't like the executive orders. I don't. I don't like it with the last guy. I don't like it with he, with this guy. But the reality is, is I also don't like the fact that nobody talks about on the left side of the aisle the ridiculousness." You know, we've had Professor Borgesian on, we've had Eric Weinstein on, we have several of professors who've pointed out, and they're liberal progressives, how ridiculous colleges have become. And they're uber progressive. Uber progressive. Eric Weinstein, where did he go? Is that Evergreen College up there in Washington? He, where it was, the, the school was being taken over for the day. For people without color, he's a professor, and he's like, I'm not leaving. They wanted him fired. Yeah, I got no problem with this. I I, I don't. I don't. I don't think it's going to do anything, short on details. But in saying that, eh, I don't really have a problem. I don't. I don't. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. One in five know the Bill of Rights. For those of you who don't know the Bill of Rights... Right. This is a brief version of the Bill of Rights. Number 10, powers reserved to the states. Great. Nine, others, rights of the people. Number eight, freedom for excessive bail, cruel and unusual punishment. Number seven, the right of trial by jury in civil cases. Number six, the right of accused persons, e.g. the right to a speedy and public trial. Five, due process. Four, freedom from unreasonable search and seizures. Three, don't quarter any soldiers. Number two. Right to bear arms, maintain a well-regulated militia. Got a lot of those going on. And number one, freedom of religion, speech, press, assembly, and petition. Just want to throw that out there for you. That's plain English speak right there. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. So there's a perfect example of insanity, right? And this is going on nationwide in sanctuary cities and states. Starts with, well, we'll give them access to some things. That kids can go to school. They can do all of these things. Well, oh, they pay taxes, but they never get any of that stuff. That Well, yeah, they, maybe they do pay some taxes. In some sense, they don't uh, uh, get some of their quote-unquote money back, but they also take services that they're not paying for either. And now you get licenses. And now we need health care, kids, right? We need health care for all. Even if you're here illegally, you should be able to access health care for all because that's just the way it should be. It's what do you say at this point in time? Whether it's New York, who's spending a ton of money now, or California and other places across the country, and you're sold the bill of goods over and over that, look, these people are here, and they come here, and they just want to work, and they provide some services, and yes, they take away from some services, but it outweighs this, that, and the other. And you don't really ever get a, an honest opinion about whether or not it outweighs, because it depends on who's doing up the study. You go to a far-right study, and it's the most devastating thing in the history of the world. You go to the far-left study, and it was like, wow, we should just import everybody here, because look at what they do. Imagine how far we'd be if we just imported everybody here. No. The truth lies in a, in a much different way. You, you know where it's felt? Yeah, do they bring something to the economy? Absolutely. At times, especially when it comes to the economy side of things, as far as productivity, can it be a benefit? Yeah, but you can't. The acid can't. Services, though. 
services in the local states and municipalities across the country, whether it's school, whether it's health care, whether it's several other things, guess what? That's where you feel it. That's where they take ve- they, uh, they take a giant snapshot. Very rarely they take a small snapshot. And what are the pressures, pressures on the services in these states, these cities across the country? Yesterday, I was talking to a reporter uh, who was out talking to several people that were dropped off, right? The Greyhound bus station in, in Phoenix is just, just dumped there because the beds are full up in all of these places where they're supposed to be held. They've come here illegally. And she says, they don't really have a plan. What do you mean you don't have a plan? Well, they don't have a plan. Their plan was to get here. They've been told in the thought process over and over is just get to this country. The country itself will help you suss out what you need to do. And you'll go from there. And a lot of them didn't have any plan. And by the way, this whole thought of everybody here is coming for amnesty because of some sort of situation. And, uh, and uh, not amnesty, but they're coming here. They're seeking asylum and hopes to stay here because of uh, it's all economic reasons. The left won't tell you that. Do I think the left for opening up the borders and just allowing anybody to come here? No. This is what the left wants. It's not broke to them. Don't fix it. They're not for mass pouring in because they understand that overnight their constituents will change. What they want is the same. And it's the same thing for a certain amount of people on the right whose donors like the cheap labor. They love the cheap labor. Cheap, cheap, cheap labor is good. It's frustrating to the average person, in particular the average person who lives along these border states, border cities. It's frustrating. But when you've got people coming here demanding, give us this, give us that. Give me this, give me that. You wonder why people get frustrated. Do I think it's an emergency I think the emergency is we've had issues for years at the border, but in particular with our immigration system. That's a big, that that, that right there, the non-enforcement of so many things, the ridiculousness of continuing to pretend that catch and release is the, the, we just got to continue to do catch and releases, catch and releases, catch and release. I've never got that. I still don't get it. I think it's ridiculous. It's, It's just, it's so idiotic. But your country and its failures and its continual corruption, whether it's Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico, it lands on us. And we say, well, we should send them more money. We've sent them so much money. We sent them God knows how much money. And how many people send money home? 99% of them. Hundreds of millions and potentially billions of dollars that fly home, zero remittance. The only people that make any money out of that are the people who are sending the money, the Western unions and things like that. It's it is it's frustrating. But when you're told, well, just give us this to help people and 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 so we can identify whether it's whether it's an ID card and then it's a license. Just do this. And that's as far as it goes, knowing full well, that's not what they want. And this is why people get pissed, and this is why people get frustrated, because it's an absolute bold face lie. And you got both parties who play a game, who look at the border, in particular, a good majority of crony capitalists on both sides, and people who want, hopefully, to make these people voters one day. And the other side likes the cheap labor. Neither side thinks there's a problem when it comes to their viewing it. It's just the people who have to live it every single day that have the problem. And they really don't care about those people. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. So I was reading. So you, you got Lori Laughlin, uh, who is, you know, obviously was a million dollar bail, $500,000 to get her kids into SC. Both her daughters are out at SC. Olivia, who was the the star YouTube influencer is beyond pissed, is absolutely furious 
because mom and dad have ruined everything. Mom and dad forced her to go to college when she didn't want to. Mom and dad were the ones who pushed her when she was happy doing what she was doing. She was making a living and she was growing and this is the things that she wanted to do. And now all of that has gone away because mom and dad insisted that she goes. On the other side, her sister, who's just a normal person, who was doing well at USC, is now out at USC and is devastated because she wanted to finish. Think, think about that. Think about two weeks ago. You think your life is wonderful, right? You know, you're Lori Laughlin, your husband's Massimo, right? Sold all those shirts to Target and all of his designs and all of that stuff. And, you know, you're worth, you know, uh, in the neighborhood of about $100 million. You're on the Hallmark Channel and all of this stuff. And life seems to be pretty damn good. And you get your daughters are at SC, so you can really be braggadocious about the fact that they're at SC and doing all these things. And boom, overnight, it's done. And now the two... People who you sacrificed a lot of this for can't stand you. That is a lose-lose. Ridiculous. My God. <laughs> That's so funny. I just, I sit back and I shake my head. This is what happens when you force kids. I see it today, even with my son Jack. I see these, you know, these these teachers that and how they're putting pressure. He's eight years old. He's eight. Some of these kids, they're so driven. You know, his, some of his little friends, they can't even go do stuff on the weekends because they, their, their mom and dad have them scheduled out the ass to do stuff. It's amazing. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Boeing, Boeing, Boeing. The FBI has now joined the investigation into the certification of the 737 MAX. That is by the Justice Department. Also, the Department of Transportation looking into how this certification, basically the stamp of approval, came from the Federal Aviation Administration more than a year and a half ago, allowing this aircraft to fly. We've now seen two 737 MAX crashes. The question, while we see similarities, according to authorities, in their flight pattern, were they actually caused by the same problem? Yeah, that's the big question. And apparently one of the fixes that they're going to do is the the attack of angle, the AOA, which is the thing on the front that talks. It, it, it looks it, if you look on on airplanes, they all have this little thing that sticks out. They look like little antennas. And that's the attack of angle. Oddly enough, in some of the countries where mm, aviation is a bit iffy, even with some of the new planes that they'll go and buy, it costs extra to hook up both sensors. And now they're going to make that standard on top of the software update. I think the more that we're going to find out about this, I think the more that we look at this, as it breaks itself down when we may even get two different reports. We may get the European version and the version of, of these countries, and we may get the, 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 the American version. And I have a feeling uh, that I, just just by the sounds of it, because there was another plane that had an incident a few days before the Lion Air, and a guest pilot had to sort it out. I have a feeling it's a training thing. I do. I have a feeling it's a training thing. And who's that on, though? That's the question I think that people are going to ask. Is it is it on Boeing to make sure that these pilots have enough and that they should say, you know, if, if their country says, you know, we, we're going to send them over for five hours uh, a day for, you know, you know, or 10 hours a day for, for three weeks and, and then we're going to get on the way? Or, you know, or is it going to be, you know, no, they need a month's worth of hardcore training and, and, and it's got to be intensive and, and, and it's got to be every pilot, not just your entire group, uh, you know, sits through a couple day seminar and we move on with ourselves. I have a feeling, I, I just have a sense that's what it's going to be, that they're, they were overmatched with the technology. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you. So we texting as we we're talking earlier about you know New Zealand's reaction to the guns, what they're going to do, what they're going to ban, starting pretty much immediately. So you can't go and stockpile your guns and then be grandfathered into something. It's it's over. It's done with. You're going to have to turn it essentially. So if you have a handgun and it has a magazine and that magazine. Has more than can hold more than five. You you're done. You have to turn it in. 
Same thing with a, with, with a shotgun, as they call it. If it has a magazine that can hold more than five, you have to turn it in. AR rifles, any of those things, all done. Turn them in now. Essentially, a shotgun, maybe an old-style revolver you can have, but uh, musket, slingshot, I don't know. But is it reactionary? And could it happen here? I just don't think it can happen here. Some people say it could happen here. It, it's not going to. We have a constitution. Their constitution isn't as old as ours. Our constitution is so much more to us. It is It is who we are in this country. It's what we represent. It's what protects us in many ways from ourselves. So, no, I don't think it can happen here. I don't. Not that people won't try and not that states won't do things to limit certain stuff. But no, I just don't think it's going to happen here. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. My pillow. My pillow. I love how. So I got new sheets. Sheets are weird. You ever buy sheets and you like you put them on your bed and you're like, oh, they felt nice. And then when you take them out and you unfold them, you're like, ah, these really aren't very good. Not that way with my pillow. They got brand new sheets. Giza. Giza, Giza sheets. And one of the other things with sheets is they never fit. They just, they are never, they're never, the pockets are never deep enough and they just never fit. And ah, oh, it just drives me crazy. I stayed at a hotel last night and I'll tell you what, I, it, it, it was like sliding into like sandpaper with Giza, the best cotton. It's incredible. You're like, you, you, it's one of those things where you're like, is that a th- what kind of thread count is that? You'll ask yourself. It's that nice. This cotton grown near a very small area by the Mediterranean Sea. It's so smooth. It's breathable. So if it's warm out, you're going to keep yourself nice and cool, which is vitally important. Uh, super durable. Deep pockets. Going to fit over any bed. And they are so amazing. 100%. Machine washable and dryable cotton made right here in the USA. Get your Giza sheets today. Call 800-983-4975 or go to MyPillow.com. Use promo code Benson. It's MyPillow.com. Promo code Benson. 800-983-4975. Promo code is Benson. It's the Chad Benson Show. Running with scissors sounds great compared to this. Say woo! It's an ex-movie. I don't know. I, you know, I just... And she, I was sure that she would say no. I made a mistake. And she said, I'd love to go. Because she didn't want to be left alone in the house again. So I took my mother to see Deep Throat. And, <laughs> and I'm sure she was mortified. And I said repeatedly, I think we should leave. I think we should go. But she was... She really... Once she paid, she was going to stay. And, and at the end, she knew that I was humiliated. Oh, my God. That guy wants to be president of the United States. Took his mom to a porno. A porno. Good for you. I wish I did more things with my mom. (laughs) Chad! Stop it! No, come on. That was funny. Could you... I I couldn't even... I mean, think about this. I want you guys to just for a second. Think about... And this is the day when Deep Throat was... When theaters, right? So think about going somewhere. And not even think about going somewhere. Think about sitting at home. And watching an adult film with your mom or dad. Think about that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's just... Say what? Hi, I'm Alex Winter. And I'm Cameron Reeves. And together, we are Wild Wild Stallions. But we're here to announce something. Yes. (laughs) We want to say thank you to you, the fans. We do. Because it looks like we might... Actually, hopefully... Make a movie this summer. Bill and Ted 3. Face the music. Yes. And it is all because of you guys, and so we owe you a huge debt of gratitude. We wanted to say thank you. And be excellent. Be excellent. Be excellent, bro. Yes, they are going to do it. It's coming out next year. I am super excited about it. I am. I'm not going to lie to you. I loved Bill and Ted. I saw the original one in the theaters three or four times. Saw the second one a couple times. Uh, and I'm excited, and I hear that they, they're going to try to do Carlin, maybe a hologram uh, again like he was before, but they'll they'll redo that. It, this is going to be neat. This is, and, and I've already got it. I've, I've talked about it. Jack and I, he's got it in his queue on Hulu or Amazon, one of those ones we have it on, and we're going to watch him, and then we're going to go see the movie together. Share something from my childhood. 
with him like this. That's that that feel a little grown up right there. I'm excited about that. I'm super excited about that. No way. Oh, I saw the John the new John Wick trailer today. Talk about awesome. Talk about awesome. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. People are texting in about, you know, Trump and the executive order and and uh, you know, why 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 do you support Trump in something like this? It's not that I support Trump in something in the executive order. Because I don't. I don't like ruling by the pen. What I do support is somebody's trying to take a stand on college campuses, and you'll hear people say it's not true. It's like with the conservatives in, in, in inside of, of, you know, the social media side. Don't tell me it's not happening. Don't tell me that these places aren't liberal bastions that are grooming a bunch of, of, of just craziness and throwing it out into the world and that it's a safe space for people who want to talk about different things. That's a bunch of crap. It's his. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Check out Duke tonight, kids. Zion Williamson's a man. This is the Chad Benson Show. in thoughts and punk rock in life it's the chad benson show a man named john mccain so i have to be honest i've never liked them much hasn't been for me probably never will but there are certain reasons for it and i'll tell you john mccain received a, a fake and phony dossier paid for by crooked hillary clinton and john mccain got it he got it and what did he do didn't call me He turned it over to the FBI, hoping to put me in jeopardy. And uh, that's not the nicest thing to do. Uh, I don't know why he continues to do this. This is one of those things where just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right? Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yes, people continue to ask the question. And his daughter continues to spar with you. And at some point in time, though, you just go, next question. Right? I don't want to talk about it. I'm here to talk about this. But his base loves it. His base absolutely loves it. Yesterday, I talked a bit about this because I, I, I can. I look at him and I say, I don't like what you're doing. I think it's asinine and stupid. From a human being point of view, non judgy, I'm picking a side here or there. Because quite frankly, one of them's passed away. I thank you for your service. The other one's president of the United States. You drive me crazy, but I like some of the stuff you do. Uh, I can look and say, all right, you know what? If you put it in the terms of he turned over the dossier, he failed when it comes to, uh, by a lot of Republicans, by the way, not just Trump, look at him and said, you you jack the pooch when it when it comes to the repeal of Obamacare. I think all of them have a part to play because they all talked a big game and didn't do squat when opportunity came. Uh, they failed tremendously. And they just didn't get along. They just didn't get along. But the reality is at some point in time, stop talking about it. You don't need to bring it up. You don't need to bring it up. You don't need to turn everything in to a drama, kabuki theater. You're, I mean, you, you just you just you step back and say, all right, the great pantomime that is going on is now over. We're on to other things. But is fan base, they eat it up. I said something the other day that. People are like, he's not a hero. Trump was right. I got, you know how many of those I got about John McCain? His base loves it. They do. And he plays to that base and they eat it up. I'm not talking about you. There's a, a group of people that absolutely are MAGA. They live with him. They die with him. And when he leaves, whether it's in two years or four years, when it's over and it's done, They're not going to be back in politics. They're done. They're moving on. 
that's it. It's him. It is amazing how much of the president's face views John McCain in a more negative tone than Hillary Clinton. There is a part of the Trump base that just wants to make liberals cry, I guess, or just wants to, what is it, own the libs, that that's all the Trump candidacy is for these folks. They love it. They don't lament it. They love it. What has happened? Yeah. I, he's abs- Chuck Todd is absolutely right. I don't agree with him on a lot of stuff. He's 100% right. 100% right. We posted something on Facebook yesterday, and it wasn't even about John McCain, and it devolved into the I hate John McCain tweet thread. By the way, happy birthday, Twitter. Uh, but it did. It just, it, it, like, how much they can't stand him. What a traitor he is to the United States of America. Just, it, it, it was, it, uh, you just sit there and you're like, wow. And that's that tribalism now. And they're, they're, they are behind Trump. Here's the one thing. Right. And it's a perfect example of of like when you look at Hillary Clinton. There was no base behind Hillary Clinton. I look out and I see all of these people that are running for president of the United States. I don't see anybody who has got any kind of cultish figure, maybe Bernie a little bit. These people for Trump. Will run through a wall for Trump. They will go through a wall. I don't see that anywhere else. For what it's worth, I don't see it anywhere else. But at the same time, you need more than just that. Uh, I think the president's uh, comments about Senator McCain hurt him more than they hurt the legacy of Senator McCain. I'm going to try to continue to help the president. And, and look, Graham's been a huge supporter of the president, but I think it's right. It's not helping. It's hurting. And it takes away from the things that need to be talked about. It does. And we need to look around and say, what are the things that need to talk about? Let's talk about the economy. Let's, you said the economy is going to be strong for the next 10 years. Well, let's see if that's going to be true because growth they're predicting is about 2.1%. That's not 3%. You need to, these are the things you need to focus on. The fighting over yesterday is not going to change tomorrow. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Less than a week since the mass shooting in New Zealand in Christchurch, and they are speaking. The prime minister has spoken about the shooting and more than a few occasions with the sympathy, but she also promised that she was going to make changes and they were going to make changes to what's happening there when it comes to guns, and she has spoken. Today I'm announcing that New Zealand will ban all military-style semi-automatic weapons. We will also ban all assault rifles. Yeah, the guns that they're going to ban, uh, essentially, if you have a handgun and it's got a magazine and it carries more than five in that magazine, it, that's going to be banned. A shotgun that has a magazine with a high capacity, uh, carries more than five, you, it's done. you got to turn it in. And by turn it in, it's just like, we're going to debate this. We're going to talk about this. We're going we're gonna to do all of these kinds of things. Nope. Here's how fast this goes into effect. People who were, prior to 3 p.m., lawfully in possession of firearms such as semi-automatic assault rifles. Think about that. That's how fast. So last week, you're going about your business. You're a law-abiding citizen. You have your gun. You've done nothing wrong. A clown, idiot, horrible, white supremacist nut job kills 50 people in two mosques, live streams the damn thing. And a week later, you've got till 3 p.m. to turn your guns in or else you are now a bad guy? Are no longer lawfully in possession of those firearms due to the categorization or the change in categorization. (sighs) Wow. Could it happen here? No. We have a constitution. Yeah, you have a constitution. The constitution's not as old as ours. The constitution's not as old as ours. Our constitution's older. And we value those in, in such a way that I think a lot of other countries just don't value their constitution the way that we do. 
We look at our Constitution, we look at our Bill of Rights and what it guarantees. And too often in this country, we take for granted the things in that. In that document, all of us have been guilty of taking for granted those things. But do I think this is a knee-jerk reaction? On the outside looking in, I absolutely do. 110%. It's a country that has been, for all intents and purposes, very nonviolent. They had one incident, and it changed the way of what they're going to do. It doesn't guarantee that it isn't going to happen again. I mean, that's, that's always been my thing when it comes to people when they talk about gun control. I've always said this. Guarantee me nothing bad will happen. If that's what you really want, I want to guarantee. And if it does happen, then you return everybody's gun and you shut your mouth. Well, I can't guarantee that. Well, then why are you trying to take away other people's freedoms who are guaranteed in their Bill of Rights that they have this, but you want to take away their rights to have these things because you say that your feelings and belief is such that you should tell law-abiding citizens turn over your guns or get rid of certain things that you've not done anything wrong and even though it's guaranteed we want you to do that because it's going to make us feel better but i can't guarantee that bad things still aren't going to happen even if we do this it can't it won't happen here now states will do all they can to limit certain things and other states will do what they do which is we're going to look at the constitution and we're going to be the state that allows you to carry freely My son came to visit me out here in Phoenix, and he we were inside of a store, and he's looking around. There's a couple people. What do they have? Guns on their hips. He's like, "Daddy, are they police officers?" I'm like, "No, they're just." But how can they? So because they're citizens of America. That's how they can. And the Constitution guarantees that. He was just shocked. He was. Just like, like, mm. you don't get that in California. California, if they could, they would do everything they could to limit to where, like, okay, you could own a gun but not a bullet, or you can own a bullet but not a gun, but you can't have the two. Thank God they weren't in charge of Reese's Pieces, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. You can have peanut butter, chocolate, but you can't have the two. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet us. This is funny. The concertina wire or the razor wire used to reinforce the U.S. Mexico border is being stolen and sold by Tijuana residents for protection due to the city's high crime rate, according to officials. Some homes in the area were also seen with the same razor wire added for an extra layer of protection, but residents refused to say where they got the material. So they're still. Stealing the wire, right? And on top of that, a lot of them are saying they're stealing the wire because since the since the massive amount of people that are heading now and the surge that's happening there on the border, in particular in a place like Tijuana, where they know if they can get into California, it is a much safer place for them because of the sanctuary state status. But they're worried because so many people are coming in and there's been an uptick in crime. Because no one's ever thought of that. Like America will build a wall. No one ever thought Mexico will steal it. Like Mexicans will be showing off their new home security system like, I built a wall around my house and Donald Trump paid for it. I was asking producer Phil, does that like... Doesn't that kind of feel like you culturally appropriated an accent? It's just an accent. He's got a South African accent. Noah's from South Africa. But uh, it, it just feels like if I did, like, hola, what's up? Hola, pues. Like, oh, my God. That's, that feels like you culturally appropriated something and you made fun of somebody. Hmm. But isn't that hilarious? They're, they're worried about their uptick in crime. And we've got people here saying, there's no problem going on at the border. Give them all health insurance and licenses. Hell, let's let them vote. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can uh, tweet at us, kids. I am so excited. Leading by example. I mean, leading by example is a leader. stands out a lot, and I definitely feel like me and Phil have to do that. I mean, every day. I mean, we practice and games and every little way we can, even off the court. Eric Pascal there, Villanova. Why are they talking? Because it's March Madness. Over the next couple weeks, we will ignore doing work on a Thursday and Friday because, darn it, 
The University of St. Mary's is taking on Villanova. Two places I couldn't tell you where they are. One's in Philadelphia. I think St. Mary's is up near San Francisco. Maybe. I mean, there's a several of them. But, hey, it doesn't matter because it's basketball, and I don't watch these teams during the year anyways, but I'm going to watch them today. <laughs> 323-538-2423 at Chad Menson Show is your Twitter. I uh, yes, I have Duke. I went I've looked at my bracket nine hundred times and every time Duke. Every time. It just should say Zion Williamson. The fact that there's other players, but really it's just Zion. Hey, average interest rate on a credit card, eighteen plus percent. When's the last time you looked at your interest rate? Here's something interesting. You want to start putting money away, you want to start growing wealth, they say the best thing to do is take your high interest rate credit cards, consolidate them to something that is really low, and that interest rate savings alone, you can start investing. It's amazing. Credit card consolidation loan from Lightstream is easy. It's amazing. You can get rates as low as 6.14% APR with auto pay. It's a fixed rate. It's never going to go up. Up to $5,000, up to $100,000 with no fees. Now, get ready for this. You can even get your money... As soon as the day you apply, it is lending uncomplicated, incredible, and you can save even more. My listeners can additional interest rate discount. The only way to get the discount is to go to lightstream.com slash Benson. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash Benson. Subject to credit approval. Rates include 0.50% A uh, auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply. Offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash Benson for more information. They're going to treat you amazing there. It's the Chad Benson Show. No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. The company confirmed Thursday that for years it stored millions of user passwords in plain text. Facebook says there's no evidence that employees had abused access to the data, and it says the passwords were stored on internal company servers and no outsiders could access them. The security blog Krebs on Security says some 600 million users may have had their passwords stored in plain text. Facebook says it's fixed the problem and will be notifying those whose passwords were stored that way. Is there a day that doesn't go by that Google, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter aren't getting something that says, oh, by the way, do you remember that time we said we weren't going to do that? Well, we totally did it. And it was just one of those things. We forgot to flip the switch. And everybody's password, now nobody else outside of the company saw it, but everybody inside of the company, they got to see your password in plain text. They got to see what your password was. So they saw it in just in play. It wasn't, it wasn't encrypted. It wasn't in, nah, 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 I got to see it. We're sorry about that. Hey, do you guys remember the time when we said we were going to do this? Well, we did. every day it's something. It's a fine. It's something. Ugh. Every day. The day doesn't go by that they're not trying to figure something up and clean up the mess. And I doubt they, they you know, uh, I, I, I can guarantee you. That when Zuckerberg started this company inside of his little, you know, room there, that he didn't think that this is what we're going to become, but he thought there might be something here. Same thing. You know, one time, Sergey Brin and, the, and, and Google, they tried to sell Google for a million dollars, and they were turned down. They said, nah, we don't want it. Somebody says, this is stupid. So I doubt they thought it was going to become all of this, but the headaches, Wow. And the heartaches from us, kids. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Somebody texted in and said, I like the fact that New Zealand's doing what they're doing. It shows that they can maneuver fast. It shows that they let emotion lead the way. That's not what we want. We have things in place that stops us. Otherwise, we'd be all over the place. We're very emotional. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Twitter's a big company. They have an army of lawyers. This could take a very long time. And I should say that this is only the first of many. We started with Twitter because they are a perpetrator, perpetrator of this, perpetrator. Uh, of the fake news. But we are also yeah, going after numerous of. other media organizations in the coming weeks. They're a perpetrator of fake news? 
Devin Nunez there. He's upset because he gets mocked. <laughs> Put your poop between us. <laughs> oh, my Lord. But one of the other things he's doing and is the fact that in this lawsuit, he claims Twitter and, and, and Facebook and all of these groups are against conservatives. They are. right? They're, it's their organization. They can. Now, now, you can ask the question, right? You can ask the question, if, if you've become the town hall, the town square where everybody goes, Have you now gotten to the point where you're creating content, you become the town square, should you be regulated, should you give people the right to speak, even if you don't like it, who's the one that gets to decide it? But you can't tell me that there isn't a bias against conservatives. You're fooling yourself. You're absolutely fooling yourselves. There's, he has, I don't think he has a shot in hell, Alan Dershowitz. What about defamatory language? Does he well, have a case there? No, because uh, the law in the United States is you can't defame a group. You can't defame conservatives. You can only defame individuals. And if you're a public figure, in order to be defamed, you have to prove a reckless disregard for the truth. It's going to be very, very hard to do. Yeah, he's got no chance at all there. But Dershowitz talks about something here that is so real, but there's problems with this. No, he has no case at all, and it's wrong from a political and uh, ideological point of view. If you don't like what Twitter is doing, create an alternate company. If you don't like what Facebook, you don't like what any of the others are doing, the American way is competition. Look, a lot of people thought that the Democrats control the media, and along came Fox. Now you have two sides presented. You can watch Fox. You can watch other programs. Uh, that's the answer. What- Absolutely. That is the answer. But here's the issue. You go up and set up another Twitter, and you say, you know, and happy birthday, Twitter, by the way. It's Twitter's birthday. It's 9 or 10 today. Congratulations. So you go up and you set up something, and several of them have been set up. You kick people off Twitter who you deem to be full of hate. They want to have their voice heard. They go to a place where whether you like their speech or not is a place that is a public square where they feel they can have their voice heard. And that place gets deemed to be hateful, right-wing, evil, bad. There, there's the, there's a huge issue there. And I see it. You know, Dave Rubin, uh, it, it, along with several other Silicon, Peter Thiel, are trying to set up the competitions from the Patreons and from the YouTubes and from Twitter, where people who are libertarians, conservatives, uh, people who are extremely liberal, people that may have horrible views, but they, they want the opportunity to, to, to talk about those things. Uh, you know, they, they're going to go there and do that. People who, who potentially spread, you know, fake news or whatever you want to call it, uh, propaganda, memeaganda, right? Because a lot of it's just always memes. But they're trying to find that. And if you do, you get what happens. Southern Poverty Law Center comes out and says, you guys are all evil and bad. And we're going to demonetize you. We're going to make sure that banks won't touch your money. We're going to get you off uh, PayPal so you, can, you can't you can do any of that kind of stuff. We're going to kick you off any way of making your money. And, and there's the frustration for a lot of people. That's the huge problem. I wouldn't have kicked somebody like Alex Jones off. I appreciate that, man. I wouldn't. But why? Because I I want to let the free market decide. Right? I wouldn't have. Let the free market decide. The problem is, is you can't do that anymore and have a shot because you're going to just be fringe and it's going to be QAnon and it's going to be all of these other, you know, people are going to all head over there because they've got nowhere else to go. And they want to be heard. And it's tough to set something up and not expect those people to come because they want to be able to have their voice. Now, if they're advocating violence, then you kick them off. If they're advocating going out and killing people. But this is that point again with the free speech and what you do anymore is you don't tell somebody they can't say it. 
right? You don't tell somebody, hey, you can't say that here. You say, you can say that, you just can't say it here. And oh, by the way, you also can't run money through us anymore. I'm going to demonetize you. So you take away every opportunity for a lot of these people who have voices to earn money, which eventually shuts them up because they've got nowhere else to go and they're bled dry. It's death by a thousand cuts. You're not taking away their speech. You're just saying you can't earn any money from it. But that's how I earned a living. But you can't. We're going to take everything away from you how you earned a living. Now, you can go out and say it all you want. You're just not going to be able to profit from it. And then you have the arbitrary people out there who are faceless and nameless who get to decide what is hate, what is wrong, what is right in their eyes. So you have somebody who is on Patreon, for instance, right? If you don't know what Patreon is, it's it's, it's, it's kind of like... It's a GoFundMe where you can go do your stuff and you ask your patrons, people who follow you, people who subscribe to you, people who watch you or listen to you or, you know, to to donate money, dollar, two dollars, five dollars. The higher the amount, you may get some extra little goodies, you know, so if you're a ten dollar a month subscriber, you may get a mug. You know, if you're a hundred dollar a month subscriber and it's a TV thing that they do, you may get to appear one time on the show, whatever it is. But if you take away people's ways to earn money and you kick them off the platform, then you've silenced them, but you've not silenced them. It's 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 it, 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 it's that battle. It's that battle. And you don't want to be on the wrong side of what in particular the establishment media and, and people out there liberals see as hate and evil and the bad side of the morals. You know. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Mark Cuban, very interesting. So last night Hick and Luber was on Hick and Looper, 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 the Loop. He was on, and they asked him about single payer, which I thought was very interesting. Because remember, everybody who is running gets their opportunity on CNN, and they asked about uh, you know the opportunity for for health care, which is going to be a very big thing going into. This election is when it comes down to this is another one of those pocketbook things is the more things get expensive, but you've got a huge, huge, huge push for single payer. You know, we're at almost universal coverage in Colorado. We're about 95 percent coverage. And we did that by expanding Medicaid, by creating one of the most innovative and successful health care exchanges in the in the country. I don't agree with Senator Sanders, the single payer approach. that You're going to have Medicare for all. I understand that we need a public option. I understand to get to that that 100% coverage. I mean, let's get let's be honest. Healthcare should be a right, not a privilege, right? Right, but he doesn't agree and and this is will be one of his biggest problems. But he speaks in rationales and 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 he, <laughs> he he actually says, "Hey, I got an idea. This could actually potentially work, but uh it's not going to be it's free for everybody." Oh. I want to support any way we can get to universal coverage. That should be our first and primary goal. It should be our North Star. But I also recognize that there are north of 150 million people that have insurance through uh, your place of business. can't imagine how we would pull them off of health care coverage that in most cases they like. Yeah, we, 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 that would happen? Absolutely. Even today, Morning Joe is flipping around. And uh, it, was, it was commercial. I was watching the last game of uh, Ichiro Suzuki's in Japan, 45 years old, playing with the Mariners. And he announced his retirement during the middle of the game. And he played the final game today. And I was flipping around. I saw Maureen Joe. And they were talking about uh, AOCs on the cover of Time magazine. And he said, you know, the, the lady who wrote the article said, well, you know, she's got all these popular plans and all of these things. And he said, yeah, they're all popular plans. And they're great for a bumper sticker. But once you actually explain what the plan is, what it's going to cost and how it breaks down, it's no longer popular. And that bumper sticker is useless. I am more focused on how do we, A, make sure we get to universal coverage and then make sure that we use, if if it's Medicare, which I think is a good choice, or even Medicare 
uh, advantage where you have different solutions and opportunities available, maybe more cost effective even than, than Medicare. How do we make sure that we get to that universal coverage, but at the same time maintain and improve quality and ultimately look at controlling costs? Controlling costs is a great thing, and it's going to be it's going to be a huge thing. Is just be you know on top of the fact that the economy is good. One of the ways that people are able to put money aside and feel like they're doing better financially is things cost less money, and health insurance is one of those things. Something I've advocated for a long time in this push to try to become this. Hey, we should do it, it's one size fits all. I don't think so. I think what we start looking at is, hey, you know what? Let's give people the option. If you want a controlled environment where you pay X amount of dollars out of your check every month, but it is government run, knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. So, but that's, you're essentially captured in there. You don't get private health insurance. It is government run. It's the single payer. They'll have government run areas of hospitals and let it go. And on the other side, we let the free market still continue to operate and work. And if you want to get it on your own or you have a business that you get it through, let it go. Let the two prong thing happen. See what happens. See what takes place. Mark Cuban yesterday in Arizona at a tech uh, convention talking about something. He has done something very interesting. He's proposing because I do believe he's going to announce that he's going to run for president. I do believe he's I think his major goal isn't so much to win. It is to make sure that Trump isn't there anymore. But he was talking about. First and foremost, what happens when you don't have health insurance. If you're about to die and you need a heart transplant and you don't have insurance, your best option, your friends tell you to go to GoFundMe. Yeah. And his idea, he thinks will save a ton of money. And he has gone to both far left and far right economic groups who look at the medical side of things. And he said, I think we should do this. And this is what he thinks it'll save. And then I'll tell you what his idea is. We save $45 billion a year for patients, $40 billion a year for the federal government. His idea is pay what you can afford. If you can only afford $100 a month, you pay $100 a month. If you can afford $500 a month, you pay $500 or more. If you can afford $1,000 a month, you pay $1,000 a month. How they come up with that, I, I you know, but it, it's pay what you can afford, right? Pay what you can afford. How will that work? I don't know. I think there's ways that we can go about doing health care and looking at it. Uh, and, I, and I've thought, you know, uh, do, we, do we tie it somewhat to a certain income, right? Like, I remember I worked for a radio group where, based on your income, is how much you paid for your health insurance, based on your salary. So somebody who was making a million dollars a year was paying a little bit more than somebody who was making $20,000 a year. A lot of different ways. Now, there's ways that people go about skirting things, and that's always going to happen. But it's it's thinking outside the box is better than... It's all or nothing, which is what we have right now. And that's not going to get anything done. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from all of you. CarShield's amazing kids. I'm telling you, go to carshield.com. Use my code Benson. Look at all the plans they have. They've got all kinds of plans, motorcycles, you name it. They've got plans that will protect your car in the case of a what if. Make cover repairs so simple and easy. 24-7 roadside assistance. A rental car for free while your car's in the shop. And, oh, by the way, the shop is the shop that you choose. I love that about them because you're able to take it to the dealership if you want. So you know the car is going to get repaired in a way that actually works and not just some fly-by-night guy who wants to get your car out of their hair and out of the door and on the road, and they could care less what happens to it. 24-7 roadside assistance and that rental car. Don't think that rental car's cheap, Right. That is a big thing. If your car's in the shop for four days, you're either taking some sort of ride share or you're bumming rides. Having a rental car is vitally important. Save yourself thousands in future car repairs. Get covered by the ultimate extended vehicle protection like I did. Call 800-CAR-6100. Mention code Benson and visit carshield.com. Use code Benson to save 10%. Carshield.com. Code Benson saves you 10%. 800 car 6100 Code Benson. Deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show.
You go, boy. This isn't about right or left. This is just about right and wrong. Right you are, Chad. The Chad Benson Show. We love our labs. We have for more than a quarter of a century. The American Kennel Club says the Labrador Retriever is top dog among canines here in the U.S. for the 28th year in a row. The AKC says whether they're yellow, black, or chocolate, labs get high marks for being smart, loyal, and great with kids. Number two, German Shepherd Dogs. Third, Golden Retrievers. Two Bulldogs round out the top five, the French and the English. Daria Albinger, ABC News. Ah, the French and the English. Yes, it's us. Yeah, we are bulldogs. We are French and we have bigger ears, but we are English and we're better. I have a doodle. I don't know what he is. He's a mess. <laughs> he's a, we rescued him and he's just a mess. I love him though. I do. I love him. Ah, he's a great dog. And then the rest of it's all lizards. But I had a lab when I was a kid, and it's still, you look back on one of those things, you're like, that damn thing was just such a great dog. Although chocolate labs tend to have a bit more issues. But, oh, what a great critter that dog there was. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. So apparently the NFL settled for less than $10 million the lawsuit with Colin Kaepernick and Eric Reed, Uh And I... I don't know if they got a penny because you know how it is with the attorneys. It's like, okay, you guys get a dollar each and taxes are going to be a dollar. So you get nothing. And we get the other $9,999,999. I don't know if that's to be true or not, but I'm sure they got a little bit of something. But they did settle and it's a now what situation because I think a lot of people think now that this thing's over and done with that somebody's going to take a chance on Colin Kaepernick this year. It's possible. Anything is possible. I don't even know if he wants to play. He could say he wants to play. I don't think he does want to play. But they said they settled for less than $10 million. So I think the NFL is happy with that. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You tweet at us. Follow us always on that. Instagram as well. At Chad Benson Show. And the Facebook. And check out thechadshow.com. Grab yourself your podcast. Here's your useless fact of the day, people. It takes 43 muscles in your face to frown, but it only takes 17 to smile. So turn the frown upside down, damn it. Have a good rest of your Thursday. Whew, weekend is here. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.